as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> On you huskies! Yes, think of traveling for hours and hours, as Sergeant Preston does, behind a team of huskies, along the Yukon Trail, through blinding blizzards and storms. Believe me, you'd want to start out with a nourishing He-Man breakfast, the kind that includes a heaping bowlful of nutritious, crisp Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice, topped with milk or cream and fresh fruit, like luscious red strawberries. Remember, in these famous cereals shot from guns, you get extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. For a nourishing dish that's always a treat, Enjoy Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. In the days of the gold rush in the great Yukon Territory, it wasn't unusual for men to meet for the first time and to become friends and partners on the spur of the moment. Just such a friendship had developed when a young Texan named Bud Austin entered the Nugget Cafe in Selkirk and approached a table occupied by a tall, well-built man from Mexico called Jose. Bud Austin stopped at the table and spoke. Howdy, partner. You have any objections to let me sit here at your table? The cafe's a bit crowded, it seems like. Well, oh, the pleasure she is mine, amigo. Sit down if you like. Thanks a lot. <laughs> See, you talk like you might come from down my way. I'm Bud Austin from Brownsville, Texas. Well, I am Jose Fernando Bernardino Luis Aldamas. Ah, uh, in other words, your name is Jose. Uh, sure, that is all anyone ever remember, amigo. <laughs> but that does not matter. You have just arrived on the boat, perhaps, Senor Bud? Yeah, I came up here to make my fortune, but looks like everybody in the States got here before me. I reckon there isn't a claim left at the state. Oh, it is not easy to find a good location, amigo. I have come up in the first boat in the spring, but only now have I found a claim which I have borrowed enough money to work. Oh, somebody here is grubs taking you so you can go ahead? See, si. First I have found the good location and filed the claim. But for a month I have not enough money for tools and supply. Oh, how come you finally got somebody to put up the dinero? Uh, others near my claim have made the strike. After that, the senor who owns this cafe, uh, Senor Davis, is come to Jose and offered to lend the money. Oh. I have signed the note, and someday I pay it off with much interest. Hmm. I wish I had enough to buy into your claim, Jose. Coming from the same territory down the Rio Grande, it seems like you're an old friend. Oh, see, si, senor Bud. To me, it is like that, too. Uh, how much could you pay for to buy into the claim, perhaps? Huh? Well, the trip and all costs a lot more than I expected, Jose. All I have left is about a hundred dollars. So, for the one hundred dollar, amigo, you are become the partner of Jose, and we work the mine together, no? Great day, Jose, you mean it? <laughs> Why, but of course. First, we shall eat. Then we shall ride out the claim and, uh, caramba, without a horse you will be. Oh, 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 oh. that's what cost me so much on the trip, Jose. I brought my horse along with me. So, so? <laughs> you ought to know folks down our way don't consider themselves well-dressed lest they have their horse along. <laughs> uh, see, that is right, amigo bueno. <laughs> then soon we shall leave here 
and go to our claim. Yes, yes. <laughs> Jose and Bud Austin worked hard at their claim. It was a month later when they rode into Selkirk and stopped behind the cafe. door and not go through the cafe. Gosh, I, I bet Mr. Davis will be glad, huh, Jose? Yes, he is. And why not, amigo? Is he not getting back his money with interest? Come in. Senor Davis, we have come with the good news. Oh, hello, Jose. What's the good news you have? Uh, we have bring more than enough gold in this leather bag, Senor Davis. To pay back what you have lent me. You mean you and Austin made a strike out there? Oh, he sure did. See, we shall be rich. Already we have more gold to bring to town. Now, senor, you can give me back the note which I have signed to get that loan from you, yes? Oh, wait a minute, Jose. Take it easy. Uh, but the note. We have bring the gold, so now I... Yeah, 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 David. Uh, give say the note he signed. Let's get this over with. Jose didn't sign a note. But he told me now, that he... please, uh, please, Senor Davis, this is not true, uh, what you say. A month ago, I came to you for money, no? It was then I signed the note. You signed a paper at that time, Jose, but it wasn't a note. Well, I don't savvy this, Jose. You told me that... Uh, well, wait, but, Senor, but now, now, Senor Davis, perhaps you will explain all this, please. Sure. A month ago, when I lent you that money, you signed a paper saying that if you made a strike... Half the mine belongs to me. Huh? I have it in black and white. No, no, senor. This is not true. Well, there's something fishy about all this. Jose and I have an agreement saying half the mine belongs to me, Davis. Next time, you better read what you sign, Jose. I have that paper with your signature on it. That means I own half the mine. Oh, but this cannot be. There are but two halves. One of them is mine. The other belongs to my partner, Bud. <laughs> There's no reason why you two shouldn't be partners, Jose. But you'll have to share half the mine between you since the other half is signed over to me. Oh, say, how could you be such a stupid fool as to sign a paper like that? Oh, it is no good to argue about it here, amigo. We leave now and talk the matter more at our cabin, no? Oh, just the same. I'm plenty sore about it. Come on, let's get out of here. Uh, adios, Senor Davis. I'll ride out with the constable in the morning just to make sure you realize that paper's legal. So long, Jose. You can expect us bright and early in the morning. The following day, Sergeant Preston arrived in Selkirk and stopped in front of the constable's office. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> Come on, King. Sergeant Preston. I'm sure glad to see you. Hello, Jones. Something wrong? Well, I have to admit something has happened that stumps me a bit. Have a chair, Sergeant. I'll tell you about it. Go ahead, Jones. You remember Jose, don't you? Jose Aldamas? Uh, yes. Jose stayed in Dawson a while before coming here to Selkirk. What about him? Well, as you may recall, Jose was tall and muscular. Built very much like you, Sergeant. I remember his appearance. I even remember he has a jagged scar on his chin. That's right. Well, Mr. Davis, owner of the cafe, came to me and asked me to go to Jose's cabin with him this morning. What for? Jose signed an agreement giving Davis a half share in his claim. That was a month or so ago when Davis grub Jose. I see. Seems the same day Jose received the money from Davis, he, he teamed up with a young Texan called Bud Austin. Bud Austin? I met him, too, in Dawson. He came to headquarters asking for information about filing a claim. Seemed like a nice young fellow to me. Yes, I know. Well, Bud and Jose came to town yesterday. They'd struck gold. And they went to Davis's office to repay the money he'd lent Jose. Oh, that should have made Davis happy. Yeah, I guess it did. But it seems Jose tried to back down on the agreement he'd signed, saying he thought he'd signed a note for a loan. Oh, I see. What's more, he'd taken in Bud Austin as a partner. And according to Davis, when Bud found out about the signed agreement with Davis, he jumped all over Jose. He started an argument. What then? Well, they both left. After Jose said they'd better wait until they got their cabin to discuss the matter. This morning, I went out there with Davis to try to settle things. We found Jose was gone. Gone? You know the place out there, the location of the cabin. Yes, cabin's near a small canyon which drops down to the rapids of the Yukon River. That's right. Well, we found Bud lying on the ground near the edge of the canyon. He had a gun still in his hand and one bullet had been fired. 
Seemingly, he had fallen and hit his head on a rock. But, Jose, what about him? I am coming to that, Sergeant. As we leaned over Bud Austin, after quickly looking around the location, he came to and struggled to get up. Oh, what happened? Where's Jose? Where is he? I guess you know that better than we do, Austin. We found this gun in your hand and Jose's hat on the edge of the canyon. I don't say what you mean. What about Jose? Far as we can make out, Austin, you shot him and then tossed him over into the rapids below. We could see footmarks where the body was dragged to the edge of the canyon cliff. Oh, no. No, that's a lie. You hear a, a lie. I, I've been knocked out. You must have it... slipped and fell after you shoved Jose over. Your head hit that rock just behind you, I reckon. Oh, no, I didn't shoot Jose. I, I didn't kill him. You can't say Take I it did. easy, bud. We'll talk it over later. Right now, we better get you to town and have that head attended to. Serious situation, Jones. I can't believe young Austin would do such a thing. Where's he now? I brought him here, Sergeant. After the doctor fixed his head wound, I took him into custody as a suspect in the murder of Jose Aldamas. I'd like to talk to Bud Austin, Jones. Mm, of course, Sergeant. Come on. Wait here, King. Sergeant Preston's here to see you, Austin. Sergeant, get me out of here. Help me find out who did away with Jose. Please, Sergeant. You have to believe me when I say I didn't do it. Calm down, Bud. Calm down. Now, tell me exactly what happened last night after you arrived at the cabin. Oh, sure. Sure, I'll tell you. Oh, when we left Davis's office, I was plenty riled up at Jose. Uh, uh, you know about the agreement? Yes. Go on with your story. Well, I didn't stay riled long. Nobody really could with Jose, but... By the time we got back to the cabin, we were as friendly as ever. You talked over the situation? Yeah, we, we had some gold hidden in the cabin and a small satchel made of pony skin that, that I'd brought from Texas. Oh. We got that out on the table and decided to take it in the morning to some lawyer so, so as to get him to fight for our claim against Davis. And what happened after that? Well, we both turned in for the night. Sometime later, there was a knock at the door. As he got up and, without taking his gun, opened the door. Go on. I heard someone speak in a low voice. And Jose stepped outside, closing the door. A minute later, I heard a shot, so I ran out. Someone hit me on the back of the head. I see. Um, oh, that's all I remember, Sergeant. Till I come to and found Davis and the constable bending over me. Jose was my friend and partner. Oh, I didn't kill him, Sergeant. And if you don't find the one who did, the law might hang me for murder. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You know what I've got in my hands right now? I've got those big red and blue packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Because I wanted to tell you fellas and girls something about the famous smiling Quaker man on the front of these packages. You know, he's your guarantee that you're getting the original, crisp, fresh, shot-from-gun cereal. Yes, My, he... but you're flattering. Well, just like I... Who said that? Why, I did. You? Who are you? Why, I am the Quaker man on the package. You were just talking about me. Well, I was, but, gee, I never expected you to say anything. Well, I don't normally. I wish I could. You do? Yes. I wish I could say good morning to all the boys and girls and their families when they have me on their breakfast table. Oh, that would be nice. But look, why not say hello now? Fine idea. Hello, boys and girls. When you see me smiling at you from the package, that's my way of saying good morning. And what's more, I'm mighty glad to see you enjoy those breakfasts of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Yes, fellas and girls, there's the swellest tasting breakfast ever. Delicious, ready-to-serve wheat or rice shot from guns. Just remember to get these crisp, tender, king-size grains exploded up to eight times normal size. Look for the big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the original, the one and only Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Shot from guns. And say... Don't forget that exciting Sergeant Preston Yukon Trail cutout models are waiting for you on eight different new packages of Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. 
you don't pay a single extra penny for these larger, easier-to-build models. Get Sergeant Preston's Cabin, Dog Sled, Team of Huskies, the White Horse Jail, 59 thrilling models in all. They come only with delicious Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice. Get yours right away. This week at Chicago's Navy Pier, America's independent retail grocers, operators of large and small stores, are assembling for the 51st annual convention of the National Association of Retail Grocers. They are exchanging ideas on the very newest and most efficient ways of serving you and your family. These men are your neighbors, your friends, who invest their own capital to do their job well. They reinvest their earnings and their profits in their home community, and in many ways are a vital part of these communities. We send them our greetings and our very best wishes for a successful convention. Now to continue. Sergeant Preston had listened attentively to Bud's story, at the same time keeping in mind what the constable had told him. There was a tense, quiet moment before Sergeant Preston finally spoke. What about Jose's body, constable? Was it found? Oh, Sergeant, uh, the rabbits must have carried it away. I see. Please, Sergeant, believe me, I declare... I admit the circumstances are against you right now, Bud. But I'll do my best to get at the truth. Let's go into the office, constable. We'll be leaving in a few minutes, King. Just uh, what do you think about all this, Sergeant? You say you found Jose's hat near the edge of the canyon? That's right. When a man gets up in the night to answer the door, he doesn't usually put on his hat. That's right, if we can believe Bud's story. Well, I'm inclined to believe it, George. Of course, Bud Austin refuses to admit it. He ain't anything to do with it, Jose's death. If he is dead... And until the body is found, we can't charge him with murder. I suggest you take King with you, George, and go along the river bank down in that canyon. Maybe you can locate the body. All right, Sergeant. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going out to look over the cabin Jose and Bud used. Maybe if you took King with you, he could uh, pick up a trail that might lead to something. Well, we know Davis and a couple of his men were there with you this morning, so if the trail led to them, it wouldn't mean anything. That's right. Do you think King will go with me? Yes, of course. King... <laughs> Go with George, King. Go with him, boy. I'll see you later, Sergeant. Oh, hold on, George, just a minute. What is it? What happened to that pony skin satchel with the gold in it? The one Bud said they put on the table at the cabin. There wasn't any satchel there, Sergeant. Oh? Davis claimed Bud was just trying to tell a story that would make us believe the motive was robbery. I see. Well, I'll meet you later here at the office. So long. After the constable left with King to hunt for Jose's body, Sergeant Preston rode out the trail toward the cabin on the cliff. He reined to a halt in front of the cabin and dismounted. Oh, buggy. Oh, boy. As Preston started up the steps of the porch, a warning whinny from his faithful horse, Blackie, caused the money to swing around, gun in hand. Sergeant Preston saw Blackie with ears pointed forward, looking toward a grove of trees on the edge of the clearing. Blackie had caught the scent of men and horses and had immediately relayed the nearness of possible danger to his master. As Sergeant Preston stood sharply eyeing the shadows under the trees, he saw the glint of light on a gun, and even as he threw himself flat, a shot rang out. That was close. Preston waited a few moments after the exchange of shots, and then seeing no one, he crawled a few feet to the door. Once inside, he stood up. Now well, to get to the front window. Whoever it was is leaving in a hurry. Steady, Blackie. Easy, boy. We'll pick up that trail in that grove. Get up, Blackie. Come on, now. It was easy for Sergeant Preston to follow the trail he found in the grove. He discovered that two horsemen had been there and that they had gone into town. He lost the trail among the many hoof prints on the main street, but seemed reasonably sure the two men had headed for the cafe. Preston returned to the constable's office. Meantime, the two horsemen, henchmen of Davis's named Wally and Ralph, entered the back office of the cafe. Well, how did you make out? We were just getting ready to search the cabin and see if there's any more gold here. 
when Amani came along. You mean the constable went back there? No, it wasn't the constable, Davis. It was one particular Mally I don't want to get mixed up with. Who are you talking about, Ralph? Ever hear of Sergeant Preston? Sure, he comes through here often. Well, that's who it was that came to the cabin out there. Are you sure it was Preston, Wally? Uh, it was him, all right. But lucky for us, he didn't have that big dog of his with him. Yeah, when you took a shot at Preston, that dog would have tried to get at us. You mean to say you shot at that Monty? Wally did, but somehow Preston got wise and flopped down just before Wally threw the lead at him. You fools! Preston won't give up till he finds out who fired at him. Like we said, he didn't have his dog with him. He won't be able to trail us here. Anyway, stop worrying. Austin's in jail for Jose's murder, and there's no way for him to prove he didn't do it. All we have to do is sit tight and deny everything. Now, Ralph's right, Davis. You got nothing to beef about. You'll end up with a fine gold mine. It was late afternoon when the constable returned to his office with King and found Sergeant Preston waiting. Well, George, any luck? Oh, King seems excited. I think he is. Because of him, we found Jose's body, Sergeant. Huh? Where's the body now? I brought it into the coroner's and left it there. Jose had been shot. He was evidently dead before he was thrown over the cliff into the rapids. No one else knows about finding him? No one but the coroner, and he won't tell anybody. Good. George... Send word to Davis that something's come up and you want to bring Bud Austin to his office. Tell him to have the men there who rode to the cabin with you this morning. All right. Then what? Go there with Austin in about an hour. Review the case just to make conversation for a short time. What about you? First, I'm going over to the coroner's. I have a plan that may startle the truth out of Davis. Before I leave, I'll coach you on what to say. Dusk had fallen, and the flickering oil lamp on Davis's desk in his office at the cafe cast shadows around the room as he, Wally, and Ralph faced the constable and Bud Austin. I don't get what this is all about, constable, but since you wanted to meet here, we're willing. Well, if by some chance Jose still lives... Now, don't be a fool, <clears throat> constable. If he was shot and then tossed over that cliff... How could he still be living? You seem awful sure about just how he died. Wally's just stating the facts as we all saw them, including the constable. By the way, Davis, may I see the agreement again that you had Jose sign a month or so ago? Sure, sure. Ah, there it is. Look it over, constable. Thanks. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I see it says here if anything happens to Jose, you get the entire mine. Yes, we agreed on that. It also states, you can see, that he'd get my share if anything happened to me. But Jose signed an agreement with me, making us partners. You tricked him into signing that one. Think what you like. This agreement was signed before yours, so you're out of luck. <laughs> Anyhow, with the evidence and witnesses to appear against you at the trial, you won't need any agreements. That's right. You will hang for killing Jose. I tell you, I didn't As have Davis any... and Ralph talked, the constable noticed the back door ease open slightly. Knowing what to expect, he spoke. Bud won't hang or even go to trial if he has a witness to prove he didn't kill Jose. Sure, but where would he get such a witness? Senores, hey, I shall that? be the witness for my good friend Bud. Holy heck, oh, look. Jose, but, but it can't be. You, you fools, you said that you... Davis stopped talking as he stared with the others at the figure in the shadows of the room near the back door. His hands shook as he leaned on the desk to look, noting the jagged scar, the tall, well-built figure, the accent. Well, why do you all stare at Jose, senores? Because he has come back from the death you planned for him, eh? No! No, it was Davis's idea. He sent us out there during the night to tell you and fix it like Austin did. Shut up, Wally. This is a trick. Whoever that is, I'll... No, you don't! No. I'm getting out of here! Wally made a dash for the door leading into the cafe with Ralph close behind. Preston spoke out sharply. Stop him, King! Hey, get him away! Cut him off, will you? I'll put a bullet in that monster! Oh, you what? Come, oh, King. Come, boy. Watch him. It's not Jose at all. It's Preston, you fool. Preston. Gosh, Sergeant, you, you looked and talked just like Jose when you came in that back door. In fact, you still look just like him. I studied his features, bud, and then disguised myself so I might pass for him long enough to get one of them to talk. Man alive, it sure oh. works, Sergeant. Yes. Well, bud, this clears you. I'm sure the court will declare in favor of your agreement with Jose. Oh, golly, Sergeant, without you being able to make up an act just like Jose... No telling how things would have turned out. Well, let's say we sort of out tricked a trickster and came up with a murderer, bud. Davis, you're under arrest in the name of the Crown for the murder of Jose Aldamas. I, I'll get a lawyer. Without the body, you, you can't do anything. The body's been found, Davis. As far as I'm concerned, this case is closed. <laughs> Thank you. 
In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure, Revenge from Beyond. They're America's favorites, four to one. Yes, among all puffed cereals, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are the four to one favorites according to independent coast to coast surveys. So at your grocer's, it's easy to spot your best buy. Just reach for the red and blue package with a smiling Quaker man on the front. Yes, buy the original wheat or rice shot from guns. It's your best buy in flavor. Your family gets so much delicious nut like flavor in every spoonful. It's your best buy in crispness. The choice premium grains of wheat and rice are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. And for added food values... Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice give your whole family restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So at breakfast every morning, pour out big bowlfuls from the convenient non-tipping package. Pour on milk or good rich cream. Top with juicy red ripe strawberries, sliced bananas, or other fresh fruit. There's an economical deluxe family breakfast. Remember, the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns comes only in the large red and blue package. A fine modern package with a sealed inner lining. That wonderful lining doubly protects the flavor and crispness until the very moment you serve it. That's why Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice is never sold in bags or bulk. Another reason it's your best buy. So buy both delicious kinds tomorrow. And now, here's Sergeant Preston. You wish to see me, Inspector? Yes, Sergeant Preston, I do. The express agent in Selkirk has disappeared under strange circumstances. And a shipment of money is missing from the company's safe. I want you to go down there and try to clear up the matter. All right, sir. I'll leave on the boat this afternoon and take King with me. Let's go, King. <laughs> yes, Sergeant Preston and King are taking the boat to Selkirk to clear up this strange case. I'm afraid Sergeant Preston may find that the case is far stranger than appears on the surface and may be a dangerous one. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker Oats. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long, 